Welcome to number seven in my series of lockdown embryology videos. I'm Alice Roberts. In the first few videos, I looked at the very early development of the embryo in utero, starting with fertilization, and then the formation of the germ disc, and the folding that takes place in week four to convert that disc into a series of nested cylinders with the central cylinder made of endoderm and it's that central cylinder that we're going to be focusing on now as we move on to explore the development of the digestive system. So this was from the week four video where we looked at how that flat disc bent around at the edges to enclose a tube of endoderm inside the embryo so that by the time you get to this stage you can see that the blue layer, which starts off flat, the ectoderm, is now wrapping around the outside of the body of the embryo, and that's going to form the epidermis on the outside of the body. We can also see that the, the yellow endoderm, which is continuous with the lining of the yolk sac, has been pulled right inside the body of the embryo, and we've got that part there, which is going to be part of the gut tube. And then the orange is the mesoderm. Here's a view of embryonic folding along a sagittal section through this embryo. So we can see how the head and the tail end of the embryo are tucking in. And you can see how the yolk sac is still attached to the gut tube on the inside at that middle portion. So we can identify different parts of this gut tube up towards the head. We have this cephalic portion, which we call the foregut. There's the midgut attached to the yolk sac via the yolk sac stalk. And then down towards the tail end is the hindgut. And you can see that allantois, which is a diverticulum, a little thin outpouching of that hindgut projecting into the connecting stalk. In this view, it looks as though the gut tube is completely embedded in that orange mesoderm. But if we go back to a cross-sectional view, you can see that there's this gap, this space that's trapped now inside the embryo. It's called the intraembryonic cavity or coelome, and it's lined by a very thin layer of lateral plate mesoderm, which is going to form down in the abdomen, the peritoneum, and also the mesentries. I'm going to focus in now on just that gut tube and think about its relations to other structures. So I'm just drawing it again there in that sagittal section through the embryo, a longitudinal section. But I want to imagine now that I'm cutting through this cephalic region here and we're going to look at a cross section through the embryo at that point. So I've just drawn a circle which is the outside of the body of the embryo and then we've got a couple of structures on the inside to look at. We'll label them up. That is the neural tube, the precursor of the spinal cord and then that below it, ventral to it, is the gut tube. And we've got some lateral plate mesoderm lining the gut tube, that's the splanchnic layer of lateral plate mesoderm, and also lateral plate mesoderm around the inside of the body wall, so that's the parietal or somatic layer of lateral plate mesoderm. Now eventually the mesoderm dorsal to the gut tube, that thick bit there, is going to thin right down until you have this very thin double membrane attaching the gut to the body wall dorsal to it. The entry bit of mesentery means intestine, so mesentery is kind of mediating, connecting to the intestines. Now I'm adding some colour, so blue as is the tradition for ectoderm, yellow for endoderm, that's what we're really focusing on of course, this gut tube is lined with endoderm and then orange for the mesoderm including the mesoderm which forms that mesentery and here it's thinned right down there it is that dorsal mesentery now something else is happening in mesoderm we've got blood vessels forming and here is the aorta and a branch from the aorta will travel forwards or ventrally to supply the gut tube so this is how the blood vessels get from the aorta to the gut tube they travel through that mediating mesentery. Now I want to move on and think about how this cavity inside the embryo gets divided up. 
So we start off with this cavity which is running all the way up and down inside the body of the embryo but it gets divided into a thoracic portion and an abdominal portion and it's divided by the precursor of the diaphragm of course. So the diaphragm is the sheet of muscle which divides the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. So this is a cross section through this embryo just before we get the division taking place and we can see the esophagus and its dorsal mesentery. Dorsal to the esophagus is the aorta, just ventral to it is the inferior vena cava enveloped in mesoderm as well. But now we're going to start getting a kind of shuttering happening where a wedge of tissue, a wedge of mesoderm is going to start pushing in from the ventral body wall. So that's the lower part in this cross section. And I'm just going to show this tissue starting to push back. So it's quite a deep wedge of mesoderm, which is pushing into the body cavity at this point. And actually there are shelves of mesoderm starting to push into the cavity at the dorsal part as well. So those pleuroperitoneal folds you can see starting towards the back, so starting dorsally and then pushing ventrally. And you can see that principal wedge of tissue, the septum transversum, really pushing in to close the gap there until eventually the septum transversum will meet those pleuroperitoneal folds and they will all fuse together. Sometimes that doesn't happen. And if we have a failure of some of those shells of tissue to grow and fuse, then you can end up with gaps in the diaphragm and a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. And you can imagine with guts pushing up into the thoracic cavity that the lungs are going to be compromised. So this is a congenital defect which can be dealt with surgically. Having looked at the origins of the gut tube and the mesentery and the way that the thoracic cavity gets divided off from the abdominal cavity. In the next video, we can start to look at how that gut tube starts to elongate, but also how it starts to bud to form lots of different organs. So that will be in the next lockdown embryology. Thank you for watching. Please like, please share, and I'll see you very soon with the next lockdown embryology video.